So why are we hanging around my backyard rhubarb patch? Well, because today we're gonna make a family favorite. We're making fruit leather. It's a really easy beginner dehydrator project that everybody loves. So let's pull some rhubarb, head back into the house. We're gonna hit the freezer to grab some frozen berries and then get started. I'm gonna show you my favorite ingredient to keep your fruit leather pliable and low sugar and even how to DIY a liquid tray for your dehydrator. Let's head into the kitchen and get started. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we are going to take something from the freezer, something from the garden, and make something delicious. If you've ever wondered about making your own fruit leather, it's actually super, super simple. You can do it with fresh fruit, you can do it with frozen fruit, you can do it with a combination of the two. I'm gonna show you my favorite method on how I do it. I'm using my dehydrator today, and I'm also gonna show you how you can make it in a dehydrator if you don't have a special fruit leather tray. So there is a way that you can cut your parchment paper to fit in there and to hold all of that delicious puree in. Plus, I'll give you my secret ingredient for always delicious and pliable with less sugar fruit leather. Are you ready? Let's get going. Hi, I'm Jen, welcome to the kitchen. Today is all about fruit leather. Now, if you're one of these people who really needs to follow a recipe step-by-step, step, you might find this a bit disconcerting because fruit leather is sort of free form and you can kind of wing it a little bit once you have an idea of how you like it. And again, it's a bit of experimentation. What flavors go well with each other? What kinds are the ones that your family is going to enjoy? So. It's a play project, that's what I call it. Um, today I'm gonna to be using some of the frozen strawberries from my freezer because it's almost strawberry season again where I live. So I am gonna use up some of the ones I had from last year. Plus it's also rhubarb season where I live. So this is the second pick on my rhubarb patch and strawberry rhubarb is just such a terrific combination, isn't it? So um, I'm gonna take a minute and wash up this rhubarb. I just pulled it out of my garden a few minutes ago and then we're gonna get started on this batch of fruit leather. Alrighty, so the rhubarb is all washed and chopped. I'm gonna put the little ends of it in my compost later. I was hoping for about three cups and I am actually at four. So that's gonna be okay. It's gonna be a really nice um, flavor combo between the six cups of mashed strawberries that I have here. We're gonna have some rhubarb. Um, you're gonna need a little bit of lemon juice. And what that does is it helps to kind of balance the flavor. You can't have, I mean, the rhubarb is gonna be tart, but generally speaking, when you're doing fruit leather, it's always nice to add just a little bit just a splash of the lemon juice to it as well to help brighten the flavor of the fruit um, for sweetener today I'm gonna use some honey um, I prefer honey you can use sugar you can use whatever it is that you like um, I'm also going to use some applesauce and I'll explain why in a minute so I mean guys this is what I call a gateway project so if you are new to dehydrating or you're just kind of getting into it or seeing if it's something that you might be interested in getting into this is one of those projects that's pretty simple and yields really tasty results the kind that you're gonna want to repeat <laughs> so let's get started I've got my big pot here I am just going to throw this rhubarb in the bottom of it so again I'm using a mix of fresh and frozen fruit and what I like about it this is I know exactly where all of this came from I'm very like eat local when you can so the rhubarb is from my backyard the strawberries are from a local uh, you pick that I go to every year so you'll you may have noticed that that I freeze these flat um, it's perfect for jam making as well and it takes up less space in your freezer so at the end of my strawberry picking every season I will mash them and then put them in six cup increments because that's the right amount that I need for jam making and then freeze them flat just like this and this way I can stack a bunch of them in my freezer and I can make jam or things like fruit leather anytime I want through the winter without sacrificing the quality um, frozen berries when you freeze them whole when they when they defrost, they're a little bit watery and stuff. They're not as nice, but when you do it this way, they're perfect. 
All right, so we've got some rhubarb in here. I'm gonna add the strawberries. There we go. Very nice. And I'm gonna add a little squeeze of lemon juice. Of course, my hands are wet and now it doesn't wanna open. Isn't this always the way when you're trying to do something? Let's just do this. This works, right? Right there, it worked. <laughs> so you can measure, you can start with about a tablespoon. I'm gonna eyeball it just because that's how I roll. But if you wanna measure, I'd start with a tablespoon and see where you go from there. So that's about a tablespoon-ish. Now I'm gonna add in a little bit of honey. I'm not gonna add too much. I'm gonna add like two tablespoons to start because you can always adjust this as your puree is cooking down. As you can see, my honey has crystallized, but that's a-okay. I don't like to heat it. I don't like to heat the whole jar up, so. If you heat it too much, you kind of destroy some of the beneficial properties of the honey, which is why I like to leave it as is. And if I need it to be liquid, then I'll just very carefully warm it when I need it. I don't need it to be like that right now. It's gonna warm up with the puree. Okay, so I'll leave this aside because I may want more later depending on the taste. Now I'm gonna add applesauce. Now most fruit leather recipes that you see just call for fruit and maybe a sweetener, which is excellent. You absolutely can and enjoy, like can and do enjoy fabulous results that way. Really. Um, I like to add the applesauce for two reasons. First of all, I find it helps sort of amp up the sweetness of the berries without adding too much additional sweetener. So I do really like that. The other thing that I like about this is because the applesauce is really high in pectin. So it helps my fruit leather have that nice sort of supple, um, you know, that texture to it that you really want. I've done it with certain fruits before where it's kind of turned out almost a little bit crispy. Um, so I find that the pectin in the applesauce is excellent for continuing to give you that nice texture in, and you don't have to add it if you don't want to, it's just something I like to do. So because I'm doing a big batch, I'm gonna add two of these. And I'll just turn them upside down so that all the rest that's in the jar will come out and I'll add it to it as the puree is cooking down but this is an unsweetened applesauce. Also, it makes the yield bigger. <laughs> so you're gonna end up with more puree. All right, so all we're gonna do now is pop this on the stove and cook this down into a lovely, lovely puree. It's gonna take a few minutes because my strawberries are still somewhat frozen and the, and the rhubarb needs to break down a bit, but let's pop it on the stove and get that process started. Okay, so while we're waiting for the puree to, well, cook down and puree, let's talk a little bit about how we are going to dehydrate this fruit puree into fruit leather. So you can do this in your oven on its lowest setting possible, um, using some parchment paper or even a Silpat liner on a cookie sheet. Make sure that you prop your oven door open just a little bit, like put a tea towel in it so that it, it's only open a crack, but enough to let some air circulate. And you can do it that way in your oven. A lot of air fryers also have a dehydrate option, so that's something that you could do as well. If you have a dehydrator, then obviously that is the perfect choice. So I'm using my Nesco American Harvester Snack Master because that's what I love and that's what I use. And when I bought mine, it came with four trays and it came with one of these liquid trays. It's great. This is like really a fruit leather tray. Um, I ended up buying an additional four to fit in here. So I have six trays in total, and now I have a total of five of these fruit leather trays. So that means that I have one that I'm going to need to create a tray for. So if you don't have a lot of these or any of these, you can make your own. It's uh, a little DIY with some parchment paper. So what you do is you take your parchment paper out, 
Well, this is how I do it anyway. So I take it out and I put my tray on top of the parchment paper and draw a circle all the way around the outside. And then I do the same thing with the center hole because my dehydrator has a center hole. If you've got a rectangular dehydrator, then you don't need to do this. So now I'm going to use my scissors and cut out my circle. And you don't have to worry if you think it's a bit larger than your tray, that's actually not a bad thing at all. Because we need to have a bit of a lip around it to help keep that liquid in, right? So let's just get this done. You've all seen how to cut out a circle. You know how to do that. But I guess you're gonna watch me do it anyway. And now in the center one, I'll just cut that out. Ooh. It's okay if you scrunch it up a little bit, it's not the end of the world. So here's the thing though, once you get the center one cut out, I have discovered in my experimentation the best way for this to really fit on that center hole and to give you that lip on the inside is to cut little notches all around that center hole. Just like that. So it creates like little flaps. And they don't have to be big, so don't cut too far. There we go. So there we go, we've got some center notches. Hopefully you can see that, so it's created these little flaps. And now, when you put this on top of your tray, you'll see that, yes, it is a little bit bigger, which is perfect. So you can go around the tray with your hands. Those little notches that you cut around the, the center are going to come up the sides, and this is gonna create a makeshift tray for you. So once you start to put your puree on it, it's gonna hold all of that down, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can make your own parchment paper trays if you don't have them, um, if you don't have these ones for your dehydrator. Now, if you have a square dehydrator, then what you can do is you can actually just cut the square and you can use little clips to clip the corners together. Oh, or even if you have some Silpat liners that fit, you can do the same thing and clip those little corners together to create that little lip all the way around. So don't, don't stress about it if you don't have these yet. Um, I do prefer it on these, actually. I find that um, I like the product better. I like the, the malleability, uh, for lack of a better term, of the fruit leather product when it's done. But I dehydrated uh, fruit leather for several years just like this, and it works out fantastically, and it's really, really yummy. So there you go. You've got two different ways to do it. So this is just to give you a better view of what that parchment paper looks like on that tray. So you can see that's where I cut the flaps and they go up the sides of the hole in the center and you can see where I've kind of pushed it down around the sides. Once we put the puree in there, it'll help weigh that parchment down and then we'll have a, you'll have a better idea of how that works. So I've been cooking down this puree for probably about, I don't know, 30 minutes maybe, maybe 40. I'm not sure, I kind of lost track of time. But I know that it's pretty much ready because even though you can still see the rhubarb pieces, they are super soft. Like if I push them up against the side of the pot, they just fall apart. So I'm gonna throw this through my blender so I've got a perfectly smooth puree, and then we're gonna get ready to pop it in the dehydrator. Here it is, the puree is done. I have blended it down in my blender so that it's extra smooth. If you don't wanna do that, you don't have to. You can have like as much texture in your fruit leather as makes you happy. So now it's time to start putting that on the trays. I'm gonna start by putting it on that parchment paper tray that uh, the makeshift DIY tray that I showed you earlier. So 
I'm just gonna use my ladle to start moving it around. This way we have enough. You don't want it too thin. If you spread it too thin as it dries, it's gonna crack and come apart and get nice and it's gonna get brittle. It's not nice that way. We want something that's gonna be, still have some shape and pliability to it. We want it to be flexible. So we don't want it really hard and dry. So the secret to that is making sure that you have enough puree and you can see that I'm kind of moving it up toward the edge of that parchment paper and doing your best to make that layer as even as you can. So here we go. Do, 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 do. I'm just gonna put a little bit extra here. And there we have it. So this should be pretty decent for the parchment paper tray. Now to make it easier for you when you're using the actual fruit leather trays or the liquid trays, um, I just put them pretty much right up to the edge. Now a couple of my dehydrator trays are warped, which is weird. I ordered some from Amazon and they came warped. So I decided to keep them because they still worked, but sometimes it can be a bit of a pain. So let's just put the puree on. So what if you make more puree than you're gonna use in this first batch? Pretty simple, I mean, you can always put some in the fridge and just when your first batch is done, put a second batch on, easy peasy. But if you don't wanna make more fruit leather right off the bat, you can always put your puree in a freezer bag and pop it in the freezer until the next time that you're ready for fruit leather. Here we go. In the end, I had enough puree to do five trays. So that's pretty excellent. I mean, we started with six cups of mashed strawberries, four cups of chopped rhubarb, and two containers of applesauce. So it's a pretty decent yield. Now, the next step is to put it on the dehydrator. I'm gonna put the lid on here and uh, set that. Now, for fruits and vegetables, you're generally looking at a temperature setting of 125 to 135. I'm gonna put mine on 135 today. Um, because humidity has a lot to do with the duration of your dehydration. Alliteration, it's just for you. Uh, no, and today it's kind of hot and sticky in the Maritimes. We're expecting some thunder showers, so the humidity is high. It'll probably take longer to do this than if you're in a more dry climate. So I'm gonna do it at 135 usually takes about six hours but it could take longer and this is one of the things about dehydrating when you get started don't be concerned about like this should be done at x amount of time it's going to be done when it's done and so many other factors go into the drying time and the dehydrating time that it's really you know it it takes a long time for you to get the groove of Okay, so it's a bit more humid today. It's probably gonna take maybe another hour. So give yourself lots of time. This is one of those projects that I usually start in the morning or I do just before I go to bed and I pop it in the dehydrator and that way when I wake up in the morning, it's all ready to go. Guess what? The fruit leather's all done, yay! So mine ran overnight because I started it late um, afternoon. So I ran mine overnight. Uh, I started it out at 135 degrees and then I turned the dehydrator down to 125 overnight. And now let's check it out and see how it turned out. So, ta-da, look at all this fruit leather. So I wanted to show you uh, the difference between what I did on the parchment paper on that DIY tray that we made, um, as well as the um, actual liquid trays or fruit leather trays that come with the dehydrator or that you buy separately. So when it comes to taking them off, so you know your fruit leather is done when it peels off perfectly. Um, so what I do is I just run my fingernail along the end or the edge, I guess, and just kind of pull it up that way. If your fingernails are too short to do that, you can always grab like just a small butter knife or something, but it should literally just peel off just like that. And you can see how supple and shiny this is. It's super pliable. It's a little bit sticky. Um, it's perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for for my fruit leather. <laughs> so let's just put this over here. 
and take a look at the stuff that's on the parchment. Now, now, a lot of people, if you're using parchment, you might just wanna cut it right on the parchment paper and store it that way, which is also a brilliant thing. But I just wanted you to see how it comes off. So I'm going to peel that back from those edges. And again, it should just peel right off the paper. See, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful fruit leather. So you can peel this off and then you can cut it into shapes that appeal to you. Um, I know some people like to use like little cookie cutters and do fun little things like that. Um, you can use kitchen shears to cut it however you like. It's totally up to you. But this is how you know your fruit leather is done. It should just peel right off whatever it is that you're using as your tray. Now, of course, around the corner or around the middle, it can be a little bit tricky. There we go. There's one little piece of parchment still stuck and it's gone. Gorgeous fruit leather. Isn't this great? So, um, how I like to do mine as far as cutting it, well, I'm gonna put my dishcloth here and grab a big cutting board. I do the dishcloth so that it doesn't like slide around. Pop it on here. And again, you can use a knife. I like to use a pizza cutter. It's super simple. And you can literally just go along and cut it into strips if you like, or triangles or whatever makes you and your family happy. So it almost scores it. Sometimes you do have to run it through a second time. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> so there you have it. Now, as far as time goes in your dehydrator, I'd love to be able to give you like a, a foolproof, it's gonna take six hours, it's gonna take four hours, it's gonna take eight hours. It's hard to say. Uh, we were having some thunder showers and it was really, really humid here yesterday, so that's why it took longer in my dehydrator than it normally would. And that's just the thing when it comes to dehydrating. Something that took you three hours yesterday might take you four, five, six hours later on just because of weather factors. So don't let that discourage you and really you're just looking for the signs that something is done and in this case these are those signs pliable a little bit sticky but easily comes off whatever tray you're using so there you have it fruit leather it's pretty simple pretty easy peasy you just need a fruit puree and you know what you can just have so much fun coming up with combinations um, pumpkin pie absolutely grab some pumpkin puree add your favorite spices the cinnamon a little bit of nutmeg in there and you can have a really nice fruit leather uh, pumpkin pie mango and you know, um, strawberry, how could that be wrong? I love a little blueberry raspberry, but you know, just have a great time. Whatever fruit you've got, maybe you've got a bunch of fruit in your fridge that you're not gonna use before it's gonna go off, or maybe your freezer's full of frozen fruit and you're just trying to make room. Whatever your motivation for fruit leather, um, you know, you've seen how easy it is to do. As far as long-term storage is concerned, I can't, <laughs> Ours has never lasted longer than a week. Um, I just put it in a Tupperware container or a, you know, like just a little container in the cupboard and everybody snacks on it. Um, if you're looking for longer term storage, you may want to vacuum seal and freeze some. So if you're doing big, big batches at a time, uh, but it will last you a while in your cupboard. Well, if you don't eat it all like we do. I'd love to hear your favorite flavor combinations for fruit leather. So if you've got some, put them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Be sure to drop a comment and say hello and subscribe to the channel because I'm always doing something in the kitchen and I'd love to share it with you. Thanks for being here and happy fruit leather dehydrating. Does anyone need to know that I taste test this first? Mm. Mm. That one's for me.